Hi and welcome back to a new video. I actually didn't even want to start this video right now. Well, she is here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we are building a new PC for a German YouTuber. And um, I'm making a PC for... And I was just in between preparing the cooling system because I ordered some external water cooling parts at Watercool already, I don't know, like two months ago because the preparation for this project has been taking quite a while because it's going to be a very, very special PC. And then I was just mid in between like unboxing those parts. I just wanted to check if everything's there and start assembling the external water cooling stuff. And I opened the box and I saw this. Which is actually quite amazing because uh, like all those parts were just purchase over the normal water cooling shop, a uh, water cool shop, and they didn't even know about a project. Um, yeah, that's quite amazing. All right, let's check what's inside. So this monster radiator, and that's why it's called Mora, is the reason why I purchased everything. Uh, it's capable of keeping up to nine 120 millimeter fans, which should make this quite capable of water cooling, as, at least for like an external water cooling radiator, and also should keep things quiet. I will assemble everything and then we will be back. Our external water cooling solution is taking shape. You can see I started mounting the fans to our Mora radiator, started adding those QL120 RGB fans, mainly for visuals because like performance wise it won't matter that much. This is the CPU we're going to use, it's a normal 5950X. And this entire radiator is just going to cool the CPU. And my hope was that this should work out passively and yeah, maybe in summer when it's getting really warm inside, then you would have those fans spinning very slowly. But for anything like daily use, uh, like just web browsing, whatever, this should work passively and therefore be very, very quiet. Today's video is supported by Hetzner with the dedicated root server AX41. The experienced data center provider Hetzner offers its hosting products for private and business clients with data centers in Germany and Finland. While offering the most recent and best technical standards, Hetzner also focuses on ecological use of hardware and runs 100% green electricity. The AX41 is a brilliant entrance dedicated root server and comes by default with the 6 core AMD Ryzen 3600 64GB memory and two 512GB NVMe drives. The entire rack design and also the cooling solutions are developed in-house at Hetzner here in Germany and with 24-7 support, high-speed internet connection, DDoS protection and unlimited traffic. Find more in the link below. Alright, as you can see, we're back at my CNC machine, which means that we will start manufacturing the distro plate. We already added those vacuum cards, basically, so we have this vacuum table underneath and this is pretty much like a very thick piece of paper which evenly distributes the vacuum to uh, fix our acrylic sheet, which is right here. It's a 10 millimeter acrylic, which we're going to use. And we also got some more equipment. We're going to use those GoPro cameras. We have two of those, so we can put them inside the machine and get good CNC footage for you. Okay, so here we can see the CNC tool path, basically. Oops. But this way you can already get a rough idea how the distro plate will look like. So on the right side we will have like a bigger chamber for the water. This is the area for mounting our main board. The small circle right here is for having an RGB strip inside for like passive illumination underneath the main board. But yeah, you will see once it's ready. Yep, yep, that worked out quite well. 
Uh, I hope you could just see the footage from those cameras. I haven't seen it yet personally, but at this point you probably have seen it. So that was the front part of the distro plate. Uh, that worked out quite well. Cutting quality, very, very satisfying. And now we're going to machine the bottom part where we will have the huge cutout underneath. By the way, the part we are milling right now is not the first part, it's actually the third attempt because we made the first part and then we did some major adjustments on like dimensions and stuff. Then we did the second one, which is this one, and just to do like leak testing and see if everything works out dimension wise. And so you can get kind of an impression where this like is heading to this, this project. And yeah, you will see the final result in a second video. By the way, this tool we're using right now is an MKD milling tool. I'm not sure what the correct English term is for this one, but it's a diamond cutting tool. And it's especially made for cutting acrylic. Price of a single milling tool is about like 1,100, 1,200 euro. And you're just doing a very thin finish, like 0.1 millimeter at the end. Yeah, perfect, now it's telling us that uh, GoPro is running too hot and it's powering off. All right, this special milling tool is responsible for having a very, very uh, good quality surface on acrylic like finishing. All right, so the second part of this plate is finished. It worked out quite well. The finishing of this should be very, very good with a diamond cutting tool. The only thing is that we accidentally cut a tiny bit into our vacuum table, like by 0.1 millimeter, uh, which is not that much of an issue. It just happens, but yeah, typically you would try to avoid it. There's this like vacuum card underneath, like this cardboard stuff, which has a, a thickness of 0.7 millimeter. And I think we went a little bit too far with the offset, but yeah, should be all right. All right, uh, let's get quickly to assembly of the bundle. Starting off with the MSI B550i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. The reason why I picked this board is mainly because of the size. Well, we have limited size for the main board. We need a lot of uh, space for the other components because we will have a very limited case. Like, it's going to be a surprise. That's also the reason why I had to, because I didn't think about that, but we had to put the dolphin sound over the YouTuber's name because he doesn't know that he will get his PC. It's going to be kind of a surprise. We did together with Nvidia and his management. And uh, yeah, so he doesn't know. That's why we had to put, well, the fox had to put the dolphin sound over the YouTuber's name. All right. Starting off with uh, the main board, you already know that it's going to be this mini ITX board from MSI. We will use a 5950X CPU from uh, AMD. I picked this CPU mainly because I think it's going to be a great choice for the future in terms of not having to upgrade your PC for years. The idea is that we will only custom water cool the CPU, mainly because today, if you will run into limits, let's say for gaming, you will mostly have to upgrade your, your GPU. We will leave the GPU with air cooling because it's a very solid GPU anyway. And whenever he will have to upgrade his GPU, he can easily do it by himself can swap, swap out the entire card. But if we decide to go for custom water cooling for the GPU as well, then he probably cannot do it himself because he never, as far as I know, he never built a custom water cooling loop himself. That's why it could be rather complicated and to keep things simple for him, we will have the best like base platform with the 5950X and then he can swap the card whenever he has to. Component wise, we have an MP600 Pro, which is generation four. This board features two M.2 slots, one on the front, which is generation four, one on the back, which is generation three. The one on the back is attached to the chipset. And that's why we will have an MP600 core, two terabyte for the back, because it's running generation three anyway. And then we have Dominator Platinum RGB sticks, two in total, 64 gigabytes. So that's a very solid kit, I think, considering the fact that we only have two DIMMs on this board. So I think 64 gigabyte 3200 should be a very good combination together with a 5950X to be sure that he doesn't have to upgrade his PC within the next two, three years. I think that's safe to say with the 16 cores that it should be a very solid base. All right, I'm going to assemble everything and then we will be back. I'm in between the bundle assembly. As you can see, CPU is already in the slot. I'm just about to assemble the M.2. Well, put the M.2 in the generation four NVMe drive slot. And I find this concept of this M.2 cooler and chipsets cooler combination kind of interesting. It's also kind of weird. Like without the M.2 drive, you can see this fan would have like direct airflow across the chipset cooler. Like the B550 chipset is underneath. Whenever we 
plug in our generation 4 NVMe drive. Then this is like partially blocking the airflow of the fan, so the chipset will have lower temps. But at the same time, this is pretty much the best cooling you can have for an M.2. Like direct airflow is always the best. It's always better than first having like a uh, thermal pad and your whatever heatsink in, be in between. Direct airflow would always be the best result. It doesn't buffer any mass, like sudden load would always have more spikes, but it's definitely the best for airflow. But then it's also partially blocking the chipset cooler, it's kind of interesting design. And the back is cooled by this thermal pad. The SSD on the back side has the main issue that there is not enough space to have the passive Corsair heatsink to be on the SSD. That's why I decided to get the thermal pad, which was included in the other SSD in the MP600 Pro. I removed it out of the case and put it on the back side of the main board. And this way we can make, make thermal contact between the MP600 core and the main board to at least somehow spread the heat from the SSD on the main board. This is way better than having no airflow whatsoever because there will be directly an acrylic plate behind this. All right, progress. And you can see I added a riser cable. Yeah, just doing some advertising for myself right now. Thermal Grizzly PCI Express 4.0 riser cable, 30 centimeter length. We actually made this one or we asked the company to make it for us obviously because it's not, it's not something we're producing ourselves, but we needed this for some upcoming projects and products like distro plates. That's why we have this 30 centimeter PCI Express 4.0 riser cable, which is perfect for this application. The entire system will be powered by this RTX 3080 Ti MSI Supremax. Very solid card when it comes to air cooling. At least that's what I saw from all the previous tests and stuff I saw. Very good air cooler, very beefy should be perfect for our application because as I, said, as I said before, we're not going to water cool this card. We will just stick to the air cooler and for our purpose, this should be perfect. Three big fans should have very sufficient cooling. Three eight pin connectors, yeah. That's overkill. Actually two, two would be sufficient, but three should also be fine. I did some basic testing just to make sure that everything is working out and everything is in line. Starting off with Crystal Disk Mark, just performed on the MP600 Pro, the Generation 4 drive. You can see read and write values are absolutely in line, about 7 GB per second read, 5 GB per second write. I performed two of those, like two times the nine tests, which is 18 in total, obviously. And that was just to make sure that the cooling is in line for the MP600 Pro, but you can see it peaked out at 59 degrees Celsius, which, which is absolutely safe for the SSD. So nothing to worry, even if there would be a very high load read-write for whatever reason, then it should always be safe. Didn't do the test for the MP600 core, but that's a generation three drive. It will stay much cooler. I don't see why this should be an issue. And looking at the MOS temperature, because that was one of my also one of my main concerns. Because it's a very tiny mainboard, it doesn't have that much area for both VRM and also the cooling itself. But you can see after about 20 minutes in Prime 95, loading all 32 threads, it's just at 65 degrees Celsius. So there is still like 30 degrees headroom, which is more than enough. And the CPU is constantly drawing about 120 watt, which is the stock value, but it also should be fine for this system. I mean, it's 16 cores and 16 cores with this type of speed should be fine even without overclocking. I will leave the entire system stock. I mean, it's just the XMP profile loaded on the memory, but yeah, 16 cores should be more than enough performance for his needs. And if he will ever need more performance in like two or three years, we could still do that. But just base performance testing, everything looks in line, temperatures all look good. Performance is also in line, about 65 FPS in times by extreme. That is actually the highest uh, GPU in my ranking. And sensor-wise, we had a peak frequency of about yeah, 1980 megahertz, typically rather in the region of about 1920 megahertz. One last thing I would like to address is the noise level of this card. Well, the pretty much not existing noise level of the card. You cannot really compare the value to measurements I did before, because typically I use always the same setup where the card is also sitting uh, in the slot normally and not like open on the table. This might absolutely influence the value because this way it's easier for it to blow out the hot air underneath the card, which will positively affect uh, the fan speed. But just looking at the measured value, I will just shut up for a second, but so you can get an idea of how loud it is when I'm talking. 
it's going down to 36 dBA, 30 centimeters away. It's absolutely nothing. You cannot hear this card. And it's running 100% load times by extreme for one hour already. So it's on maximum temperature, but fan speed, you can also probably see it in the video. Yeah, the fan speed is very low. So a great choice if we want to keep the card air cooled. In fact, this tiny fan, even though I manually lowered the fan speed in BIOS to max uh, 3000 RPM, this tiny fan is louder actually than the card, which is quite funny, but uh, yeah, if you're like one meter away, you cannot hear either of both. By the way, everything was used with this MSI 850 watt PSU, which is silent, and that's pretty much all I can tell about this PSU, because I'm not a PSU tester when it comes to like normal PSUs, I don't have the PSU testing equipment, so I can just subjectively say that it's very quiet, which is positive, and that's all. Um, apart from that, all the components are tested now and should be ready to go. Performance is great, no noise level. Actually, the most noise I can hear is from the pump, from the DDC pump of my external water cooling solution right here. But for the final rig, we will use a D5 pump, which is mounted to the Mora, and that should be about four meters away from the system. So the goal will be that you will not be able to hear this entire system once it's built. All right, but you will see all of that in part two. See you soon.